Hello everyone and welcome back to Comic Vantage. So today we have our previews guide episode. And these are for books that are coming out February 2020. That's right, we are looking into the future. <laughs> All right, like always guys, we are going to start with our DC guide. So here we go. Looks like we have some Harley Quinn and Birds of Prey happening right now. Woo! You know, they're expecting to make a mint off of that because of the whole Harley Quinn, you know, cartoon series that's coming out and the movie. And yeah, I don't know if that's actually going to work out. But hey, who knows? All right. So let's start off right here. First, we have The Flash. And this is issue number 750 coming out. So this is a big milestone. And like always, they are going to go all out for it, just like they did with Wonder Woman and Batman and Action Comics. So we have stories by Joshua Williamson, Jeff Johns, Michael Moresi, Marv Wolfman. Hey, look at that. Ah, uh, yeah. All right. So next up we have for the month of January or February that everybody should be picking up is Batman Pennyworth R.I.P. number one. Oh, poor Alfred. All right, so anyway, it's a one-shot, $4.99. It should be actually pretty good, I would think. Alfred Pennyworth served the Wayne family for decades, even through the tragic loss of Bruce's parents. His death at the hands of Bane is the only event that could possibly compare to that fateful night in Crime Alley, and it leaves Bruce at a similar crossroads. So... That should actually be a fun read. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, Amethyst. We actually got Gem World coming back. So we got Amethyst number one coming out. And let's see. Oh, new little imprint there. Wonder Comics. Woo! Cardstock variant cover by Stephanie Hans. That should actually be really cool. Stephanie Hans is a great great artist so what else we got coming out we have deceased unkillables number one but spinning out of the dramatic events of 2019 smash hit writer tom taylor returns to this dark world with a street level tale of death heroism and redemption led by the red hood and deathstroke dc's hardest villains and anti-heroes fight with no mercy to save the only commodity left on a dying planet of undead life. So, got a cool variant cover coming out right there. That's actually really badass. I know several Red Hood fans who are going to pick that up. We have our horror movie homage variant cover, which is really cool. It's actually really neat. I like that. Okay, what else we got? We have DC's Crimes of Passion number one. And this is a one-shot prestige format, $10. DC is really, really, really pushing these whole one-shot prestige format things for just a huge injection of cash. And, oh no, gotta have it. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna skip over that then. So what do we got here? The Green Lantern Season 2, Issue Number 1. Green Lantern returns in an extra double-sized debut issue. That should be a lot of fun. I know some Green Lantern fans out there who are going to enjoy that. And then we come to Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey. What do we got? This is going to be bi-monthly. Holy crap, the first issue is $5.99. Prestige Plus, whatever that means. Issue number one of four. All right, so we have four issues coming out of that. So we've got a little mini, 32 page, like I said, bi-monthly. So once every couple months, I'm assuming. Yep. And let's see. Leviathan Dawn, issue number one. Now, this is written by Brian Michael Bendis, so this is going to be on a lot of people's pull lists just to go check it out. Again, it's a one-shot ex exploding out of the pages of the Event Leviathan miniseries. This is an all-new special blast. The DC Universe into a dangerous and brave new future. Okay. Yeah. Brave new future. Woohoo. Uh, let's see. And then we got some facsimile editions coming out. The Flash, 123. Green Lantern issue number one facsimiles. If you don't know what facsimiles are, they are print perfect duplicates right down to the advertisements minus the price tag. They're actually a little bit more expensive than they were back then. Okay, what else do we got here? Hey, let's see. Is my computer going to actually load this page? Woo Who knows? Come on, do something. Pachow. Wow, we were doing so well up until now. I don't know why that only it seems like only the DC guy does this to me every month. All right, let's see. Oh, there we go. We have another Joe Hill Hill House comic from the Black Label line. 
Plunge, issue number one. And this is in the aftermath of a devastating tsunami, an exploration vessel known as the Dareleth begins sending an automated distress signal from a remote atoll in the Bering Strait. The only problem is that the Dareleth has been missing for 40 years. Dun, dun, dun. It actually sounds really cool. I love a lot of these horror stories. And yeah, it's kind of neat. Joe Hill's really been really cranking it out there with some good stuff. So, okay, what else do we got? We're going to jump ahead here a little bit. Super villain, Superman Villains, issue number one. Again, one shot on sale, 2 12, 2020. The Man of Steel's greatest villains react to the biggest news to ever rock the DC Universe. Lex Luthor, Mongol, Toy Man, the Joker, and more of the world's greatest villains must come to grips with how the world changes now that the truth has been revealed by Superman. Actually, I think they're talking about him revealing his identity, which is kind of neat. Uh, that should be a lot of fun to read. It's actually kind of cool, too, seeing it from the side of the villains. And, you know, sitting there going, what the hell? We should have known it was Clark Kent all this time. <laughs> all right. Issue number 57 of Aquaman. The Aqua Baby is born. Yes, a lot of people are going to pick that up. And let's see what else we got here. Aqua Baby. Seriously? Couldn't come up with anything better than that? Aqua Baby. Oh, why am I here? Oh, hey. We got some Wonder Woman action going on here. Oh, that... That is why I wanted to show this book. Look at that. Tell me that's not Linda Carter right there. Look at that beautiful variant cover. I even need to buy this book. I'm not even a Wonder Woman fan. But, you know, growing up back in the day, Wonder Woman was on TV with Linda Carter. And you just have to have to buy it. Okay, what else we got coming up? Hey, we got some dollar bin comics coming out from DC. Some really good reads here, like Shadow of the Bat and Batman 386. Really can't pass a lot of these up for a buck. And we also have The Flash Rebirth, issue number one, and The New Teen Titans, issue number two, and Amethyst, issue number one from 1985, coming at you with a little dollar reprint. So, that should be fun. Next up, we have our Marvel's book coming at you. All right, and starting right away with Marvel, we are going to jump on in here, and we're going to come to... Wolverine! Yes, Wolverine was on the cover and I just jumped inside. So we have Wolverine coming back in his own new little series. And, of course, a ton of variant covers. Covers by Adam Kubert, Scotty Young. I mean, we are all over the place. But this one is going to be the one everybody wants right there. The Hidden Gem Sketch Cover by Jim Lee. I'm pretty sure this is probably just reused Jim Lee uh, artwork. But, hey, it belongs to Marvel, so why not? <laughs> Oh, we also got a die cut variant cover by Chip Kid. Let's see. Wolverine has been through a lot. He's been a loner. He's been a killer. He's been a hero. He's been an Avenger. He's been to hell and back. And now as the nation of Krakoa brings together all mutant kind, he can finally be happy. So, you know, that's actually that sounds like a lot of fun. I guess this is going to be the die cut cover where it's going to slash through. Raw, you know. Okay. Along with that, we have some facsimile editions coming out. We have the... Uh, Wolverine Mini Facts Limited Edition issue number one and the uh, Wolverine, what is this? Claremont and Bushima number one facsimile edition. So, oh, so we got the mini series and then the full series. And then we also got the graphic comic box. But I warn everyone against getting these graphic comic boxes. Uh, all the ones I've picked up from DC or Marvel have been absolute trash. They are very thin, flimsy, they bend, fold, and they even fall apart. I, seriously, I had one after a month, the seam completely just split on it, and, you know, comic books come tumbling out, people are not happy. All right, then we also have Marvel Tales Wolverine. Look at that. That's actually a really cool kind of throwback cover there. And then we have The Seeds Were Planted in House of X. Now we have X-Men Fantastic Four, issue number one of four. I'm not even sure what's happening there. Uh, oh, hey, Franklin Richards is coming home because I guess technically he is a mutant because he was kind of born with his abilities. All right. So that should be interesting to see him learn how to use his abilities. We all saw him early on. You know, Franklin Richards had his own little thing going on way back during the Age of Apocalypse where they used him to like reconstruct the world sort of thing. Oh, and we have some cool covers from Terry Dodson. 
Oh, and we're going to have the X-Men Fantastic Four issue number two coming out in the same month. So if you're into that, make sure you grab both issues, the beginning and the end of the month. Then we have the giant size X-Men, Jean Grey and Emma Frost, issue number one. The first of five essential X-Men tales specifically designed to showcase some of Marvel's best artists. First up, Russell Doderman, superstar artist of Thor and War of the Realms. When Storm is in danger, it's going to take two of the most powerful telepaths on Earth working together to make things right. Yes. I don't know. You know, growing up in the 90s, X-Men was one of my favorite, probably my favorite book ever, but... I don't know. I've been hearing it's really good again with this whole, you know, the the revamp that's been taking place in the last six months. So I will definitely give it a try. But up until now, it's been sort of lackluster for the, I don't know, the last 10 years. <laughs> All right. So let's see what else we got here. And it looks like Ant-Man is getting his own little book here. Ah, get it? Ant little. Yeah, that was bad. <laughs> Let's find out. Is this? I don't even know if this is a mini or a ongoing series because I don't see anything anywhere. But it doesn't matter because Thor number three is also coming out. <laughs> All right, let's jump ahead some more here. Oh, actually, we can just pachow. Nebula is getting a mini series, and wow, that is a beautiful cover. Issue number one of five. We have two different covers going on. Oh, actually, that's a Jen Bartel cover. That's why it's gorgeous. Look at that. Beautiful. That's a gorgeous book. Actually, I think I like it better than the variant, which is really shocking to say. All right. And then since we are in 2020 at this time, the whole Iron Man 2020 thing is really kicking into high gear. That's a cool cover right there. And this, this is Iron Man 2020, issue number two of six. This is beautiful. I love the look of this. Now, um, anyone who's a fan of Barry Windsor Smith or the old Machine Man series, when the Machine Man 2020 miniseries came out, uh, there was it was four covers, and each one showed Machine Man coming together one little piece at a time until he was complete on the last cover, and this is sort of a throwback to that. Oh, yeah, I'm going to have to get it just for those. It's beautiful. Variant cover by Ron Lim for Iron Man 2020. Ron Lim is an awesome artist. Here's some of the interior work. Looks really cool. We can see some of the Iron Man 2020 armor going on right there with the big gears on the shoulders. Yeah, there we go. I do like the revamped Iron Man 2020 armor. I like it a lot. It's very, very cool looking. And then, oh, see, this is what I was talking about. That cover right there in the middle. That's issue number two. The first one had Machine Man in even more pieces, and then he comes together until the final issue. He's complete. These are all Arno Stark stories, I'm assuming. And some other Machine Man stories. And War Machine, or not War Machine, but, you know, Iron Man 2020. And we have Machine Man 2020 issue number one coming out. Issue number one of two, which sounds really cool. We have Force Works coming back. I was a fan of Force Works back in the day, so I'm really excited for this book as well. Three issues of that coming out. And, you know, all these 2020 books, I think everybody should be grabbing them because they are just going to be a lot of fun. Marvel Voices issue number one. Now... The World Outside Your Window, Marvel's acclaimed podcast series focusing on telling the stories of diverse creators and their unique perspectives brings a one-shot of brand new adventures. So, the X-Men find their place in the world after declaring a new nation. Killmonger strikes, Moon Girl and Devil Dino return. Look at this, the slew of artists in this thing. I mean, wow. And actually the slew of writers. So I think this is going to be an interesting book. It is a one-shot. It's only five bucks. Might be worth picking up, everybody. No prestige format $10 book here. <laughs> All right. Gwen Stacy's getting her own mini. So a lot of people are going to be excited about this. Personally, I've never been a huge Gwen Stacy fan. But hey, who knows? The first of Gwen Stacy's Amazing Adventures. All right. So we have an Adam Hughes cover happening. Star issue number two of five. Now, number issue number one is going to come out in January, but man, this issue number two is 
Beautiful cover. Death and cover grab, especially with that variant right here. Let's go ahead and jump ahead a little bit further. Jerry Dugan and Ron Garney bring us Fantastic Four, Grim Noir, number one. That cover there just strikes me a lot of almost like a Sin City Frank Miller feel to it, so I think I might have to grab this. Jerry Dugan's absolutely amazing writer, so I have a feeling this book is going to be a breakout hit. Spirits of Ghost Rider, Mother of Demons, issue number one coming out. Since the dawn of man, she has birthed the worst of humanity's ills. Her kin call her mama while her men curse her name Lilith. So we have a story all about Lilith coming out. Really cool. It's a great cover. Could be a lot of fun for all you Ghost Rider fans out there. Dark Agnes, issue number one of five. Robert E. Howard's Swordswoman in her first solo comic series. You know, I think uh, Marvel's really trying to, you know, reach, dig deep into Robert E. Howard's stories just because, you know, Dynamite has Red Sonia and they can't use her. But Dark Agnes might be kind of interesting here. It's actually kind of a cool little cover there. Forced into an arranged marriage, Agnes took matters into her own violent hands to free herself from the yoke of a life she never wanted. Now the woman known as Dark Agnes, along with her, mer along with her mercenary partner Etienne, make their way through 16th century French as cell swords on their way to join the wars in Italy, where the real money is. So that actually sounds kind of cool. Let's see what else we got going on here. And then we have Star Wars Darth Vader issue number one. Now, I thought this was kind of a cool idea. In the shattering climax of The Empire Strikes Back, Darth Vader infamous, infamously reveals his true relationship to Luke Skywalker and invites his son to rule the galaxy along his side. But we all know Luke refuses. But what about Vader? Because we know, I remember Luke's utter horror. You know, in the unthinkable refusal and embarks on a bloody mission. And yeah, here we go. So this actually tells you kind of the story between Empire and before Return of the Jedi of Vader's thoughts and what he was going to do in this point after his son turned him down. So that actually sounds like a lot of fun. I'm a huge Star Wars fan and Marvel's really, really been nailing it with these stories. So it should be really exciting. And man, there's another cool cover right there. Love it. All right. So actually, that is it for our Marvel book for the month. Next up, we are going to jump in on the big book. Now, the big book is everything previews has soliciting for the month of February, other than Marvel and DC. So this is a good chunk of my video here. So here we go. All right. Let's start off right away with... Usually it's image. Let's see what I got here. And it is Image! We have the Savage Dragon issue number 250 coming out. 250 issues. Way to go, Eric Larson. That's actually pretty cool. Um, and he kind of did a uh, uh, replica cover of his very first issue, which is very cool. I like that a lot. For 28 years. Man, that book's been around 28 years. All right, what else do we got here? No, I don't want that. Really not much going on in Image this month. Tartarus issue number one. This actually sounded like a lot of fun. Flun. Yeah, so it was a lot of fun. Um, a new adventure series with a sci-fi drama of Breaking Bad set in Moss Eisley. Promising young cadet Tilde is framed for crimes against the Empire after discovering her mother was the ruthless warlord of the deadly colony Tartarus, a vital player in the Galactic War. Now, only Tilde's only way home may, may be to reclaim her mother's dark crown. Sounds like a lot of fun. I'm a huge fan of sci-fi books, though, so I really, really can't complain about that. Wow, yeah, that was it for Image for that month. Just those two books, which is really surprising. But, you know, it's a new year. A lot of people take it easy. All right. Dark Horse has a new Predator series coming out. Predator Hunters, issue number one of four. So if you're a fan of Predator, make sure you grab that. We have some cool interior art of a spine being ripped out, a la Sub-Zero. <laughs> All right, and then we have, bang, issue number one. 
the best of best secret agent with memories he couldn't possibly possess, a mystery writer in her 60s who spends her retirement solving crimes, a man of action with mysterious drugs that keep him ahead of a constant string of targeted disasters, a seemingly omnipotent terrorist organization that might be behind it all, and they're all connected to one man, a science fiction author. <laughs> This is actually a Diamond Gem of the Month, which means they are really pushing this as well. It sounds like a fun ride. And another book from Dark Horse. We have Tomorrow, issue number one of five. This is a new series coming out, and it is uh, from their Burger Books line. Now, the Burger Books line are usually kind of slightly more mature, usually uh, almost verging on like the literary side, but awesome awesome reads really really good i would suggest anybody pick up anything burger books in the shocking new sci-fi horror series a russian computer virus has jumped the species barrier and wiped out most of the adult population leaving the world precariously in the hands of the next generation in the wake of devastation musical prodigy oscar fuentes is separated from his twin sister sira stranded on opposite sides of the country they're swept into a rapidly evolving network of teenage gangs can Oscar find his way back? It actually does sound very cool. All right, and next up, what else do we got here? Hidden Society, issue number one. Yeah, Dark Horse is really cranking it up for the month. Let's see, a new series from Raphael Albuquerque. The team behind Neil Gaiman's A Study in Emerald. Hidden from ordinary eyes, there is a world alongside our own, full of deities, demons, and danger, where magic wins out over science and dark secrets lie in wait. Ulu, the last wizard from the Hidden Society, enlists the aid of a blind girl and her demon, a young magician and a cursed bounty hunter, in order to stop a group of nihilistic warlocks from waking the Society's greatest nemesis. I love stories like this. They're always so much fun. So I would actually suggest anybody pick that up. You know, and it sounds great for a Netflix show, too. So there you go. All right, what else do we got here? TMNT Jenica, issue number one of three. So what we got going on here is we have the story of Jenica happening. And it's going to dive more into her backstory. She's actually was a pretty much a breakout character from the last year from TMNT. Uh, you know, it's a new turtle. It's a female. So everybody's going to have a lot of fun with this. Cover by Freddie Williams. Great guy as well. Let's see. What else do we got? I think I might be not going far enough. Here we go. Also from IDW, we have The Crow, Leth, issue number one. He is Noel Narcos, popular performer in the Freak Chic Circus Sideshow. Able to endure horrific violence on his body without pain, but outside his nightly shows, Null is a blank slate with only the faint but disturbing memories of who he was before revealed. This actually sounds like a lot of fun. I mean, I'm a huge fan of The Crow. I haven't liked all of the Crow series that have been out, all the little minis here and there. But this one sounds really good. I'm definitely going to pick it up. Let's see. Coming out, also coming out of IDW, we have a Judge Dread 100 page giant. That's right, a 100 page issue of Judge Dread. Take a trip, a trip through the rough streets of Mega City One with the one and only Judge Dread. So we have a whole bunch of little stories going on at the same time. It's 100 pages and it's only 6 bucks. I mean, I don't see any of the big guys doing that. And it's going to be a lot of fun. It's Judge Dredd. All right, what else have we got here? Haha, -ha, dare to be groovy. Dynamite is bringing us death to the army of darkness. Any Bruce Campbell or Evil Dead fans out there, you need to grab this book. Uh, Gem of the Month, which means Diamond says it's going to be good. Listen to Diamond. All right, what else is up? Oh, of course, Vampirella, the 50th anniversary art book with that gorgeous art germ cover. And, of course, it's just going to have some beautiful and sexy pictures throughout the entire thing. I mean, we have artists featured. We have Art Germ, J. Scott Campbell, Lucio Perillo, Alex Ross, Jenny Friesen, Terry Dotson, Joe Jusco. I mean, whoever you – everybody – who is anybody has done a cover for Vampirella, and they are all going to be in this giant art book. It is $40, 240 pages, but I really, really, really think this is going to be worth it. 
What else do we got here? Oh, look at all these beautiful, beautiful Vampirella pictures. Vampirella issue number three, 1969 replica edition. This is their facsimile. All right, let's see. Jump further here. Vengeance of Vampirella issue number 25, or issue number five. Now, usually I don't jump in at some of these later issues, but man, that's a beautiful cover by Ben Oliver right there. Do you see that? Oh man, that is just gorgeous. I, I'm probably going to end up picking up 10 copies of that book. I mean, it is just too, too, too nice to pass up. And then we have all the limited version versions of this book. Like they do have the Ben Oliver limited version cover, 50 bucks on that bad boy. And the Lucio Perillo right next to it, also 50 bucks. But man, that might be worth it. I'm definitely going to keep an eye out for that. All right, coming out of Boom Studios, we have Alienated, issue number one of six. This actually sounded like a lot of fun. Three teenagers, each an outcast in their own way, stumble upon an unearthly entity as it's born. As they bond over their shared secret and the creature's incredible abilities, it becomes clear to the teenagers that their cute little pet is a super predator in the making and it's in need of prey. Guided by the best intentions at first, the teen's decisions soon become corrupted by adolescent desires, small town jealousies, and internal rivalries. This almost sounds kind of Death Note-ish, you know, where, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, you haven't seen Death Note, it's actually really cool, you write a name in a book and a person dies, but he did it all with the best intentions, and it looks like this is kind of like the same thing. But I think it might end up corrupting them. And I don't know. It just sounds like a lot of fun. I'm definitely going to start grabbing that. All right. What else do we got here? Oh, we are in Action Lab Danger Zone. You know, a lot of these small indie books have been putting out some really, really great titles. We have Argus right here. The Argus issue number one. Time travel is real. Scientific prodigy Randall Patton has had a breakthrough that allows time travel through the time stream, which immediately led to the creation of the Argus, the temporal law enforcement organization that polices the time-space continuum. After an accident renders one of the members of the Argus insane, he begins killing all of the others. Whew, that sounds like a lot of fun and a wild ride there. And we do have a uh, quick art shot here. You can get some of the interior pages. You know, like I said, a lot of these smaller companies have been putting out some really great reads. And if you follow my channel, everybody knows I'm all about incredible reads. I will always pick it up. The Man Who Effed Up Time, issue number one from Aftershock Comics. Weren't we just talking about time travel? Anyway, Sean Bennett is just your everyday ordinary worker in a high-tech lab with a prototype time machine. And yeah, he's got the same temptations any of us would have about going back in time. Just a bit. To correct mistakes of the past or right old wrongs. So when he meets a version of himself from the future who encourages him to do just that, Sean takes the temporal plunge. Only can you guess what happens next. <laughs> oh, that should be a blast. That sounds like it's present, presenting a time-twisted sci-fi action comedy. And that's exactly what it sounds like. Hey, it's from the writer of Chew, so that should be really good then. Okay, next up, Undone by Blood, issue number one, The Shadow of a Wanted Man. In the early 1970s, Ethel Grady Lane returns to her hometown of Sweetheart, Arizona, with only one thing on her mind, killing the man who murdered her family, but first she'll have to find him. I'm all for revenge stories, so as soon as I saw that, I was like, yep, gonna have to read it. Okay, coming out of Antarctic Press, we have Offworld Hazel. I just love that cover. This is a sci-fi double feature book, two sci-fi stories in one flip comic. First up is Interstellar Stellar Dust. An intergalactic prison transport vessel breaks down and the crew and a band of less hardened criminals do whatever they can to survive. Next book, Hazel, is the newest member of the Deep Block Terror Squad. As her team begins its mission to shut down a gang's chain supply, 
she sets out to prove she's the best. Antarctic Press has really been putting out some great books. I know I keep saying this, but indie comics lately have just been absolutely amazing. Everything Antarctic Press has just been phew, shooting through the roof, and I doubt this is going to be any exception, because if one of these stories is a breakout hit, or even both of them are breakout hits, and they get their own series or minis, this book is going to skyrocket. So I would just grab it just for a little bit of uh, you know, spec going on there. All right. All new Lady Death story coming out. Scorched Earth issue number one of two. A whole metric ass ton of variant covers like, you know, Brian Polito is known to do with Coffin Comics and with Chaos back in the day. We have ultra limited premiums and all kinds of good stuff. But hey, it's a new Lady Death that you can order. And uh, Lady Death books are usually a pretty cool ride. All right, what do we got here? We have all kinds of stuff from Mad Cave Studios. I'm just going to jump right in here. We have Battle Cats, Tales of Valdaria, the first in a series of anthology stories designed to shed light on the rich world of the Battle Cats. <laughs> Each one is crafted by a different creative team and will enhance the already lush characterization of some of the most important V-lines in the millennia since Valdaria's inception. That's cool. Savage Bastards over here is a story of brotherhood, revenge, and betrayal. Set in the 1860s, follow half-brothers Sam and Elliot as they fight across a series of satellite towns in the Sonoran Desert in order to save Elliot's mother. Good stuff. Those actually sound really, really fun. Okay, next up... From Oni Press. Oni Press puts out some great books like Letter 44. If you haven't read Letter 44, grab Letter 44. New series coming out, Backtrack, issue number one. Guilt weighs heavily on the former criminal wheelman, Allison, who led an illicit life that left her shattered into pieces. But when she hears about a massive cross-history car race that grants the winner a chance to correct a single mistake in their life, Allison will drive from the Big Bang to the death knell of the universe for the grand prize. You know, they have us listed as action adventure, but man, that all sounds like there's some sci-fi thrown in there, along with I don't even know what else, but who, you know, who doesn't love a good race story? Just like a Death and Glory that came out recently from uh, uh, Image Comics. Okay, what do we got here next? Oh, The Adventures of Byron, issue number one from Scout Comics. Scout Comics puts out some really good books. A one-shot introducing everyone's new favorite monsters, what happens when ordinary monsters find themselves in life's awkward situations? <laughs> uh, it actually just sounded like a fun book. And, you know, anything from Scout Comics has also been really good. And, uh, you know, really being looked at by small comp or by some, uh, like, TV studios and things like that, too, to make television shows. It's like, uh, you know, Marvel has their own studio going on. DC has their own studio going on. So a lot of these big companies are scrambling to pick up comic book properties, and they're looking to these small companies. So almost anything small press is going to have some spec to it. All right, from Titan Comics. Robotech Remix, issue number one, Deja Vu. This is an all-new series that will take beloved characters and iconic mecha to places fans have never seen before. Now, when Titan Comics first came out with the uh, Robotech series, I guess it was about a year or two ago, I wasn't all that impressed with it. It was just, it was pretty much a panel for panel of the cartoon series, but we've all seen the cartoon series a million times. We didn't need a rehash in the, a comic book form. This is more of what I was looking for, a retelling, a brand new storyline, a retooling of the characters, bringing them to the modern times. This is going to be a must-have. All right, we're going to be rounding this up here with some uh, Valiant Comics. Looks like Doctor Tomorrow issued number one. You know, we haven't seen a new series come out of, or a new character come out of Valiant for a while, so... What do we got here? Dr. Tomorrow number one, hot-headed teen and star athlete Bart Sims is about to meet the Valiant Universe's greatest hero himself. That is actually sounds like a blast. You know what happens when a teenage kid becomes the greatest superhero in the Valiant Universe? Let's find out. Dr. Tomorrow, they do have a pre-order bundle. Includes covers by Neil Adams, Barry Kitson, Hanson Templer, and Cully Hamner. Ask your local comic shop by January 27th. 
What the pre-order bundle is, is you get a special, you go to your, your retailer and you say, hey, I want these five books, pre-order them for me. They tell Diamond, hey, I got, I want these five books. And because you're pre-ordering all five at one time, you get special covers, you usually get special interior like uh, uh, interviews and behind the scenes and stuff like that. So it's totally worth it if you want to check out a new character coming out of Valiant. Also coming out of Valiant for the month, we have Bloodshot issue number zero. Bloodshot's going to be hot, hot, hot coming up with the new Vin Diesel movie. So Valiant is really pushing him. Oh, hey, <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> All right, guys, that's actually everything for me for the month of February 2020. Like always, guys, you are amazing. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, to my Patreon subscribers, you guys are so awesome. Love you all. Your names are going to be rolling up in the credits here. To my normal Patreon, you guys are amazing as well. I completely appreciate the support. It means a lot to me. And to everyone else out there, if you're new to the channel, hit the little CV down in the corner. And like always, thank you for watching and take it easy.